on, on the Elimination Chamber should have been for Luke because sure. then at least it gets people to buy into him a little bit because mm-hmm. for a while now he's been classed as a bit of a jobber. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess uh, if anything people will be wanting to tune in to find out if it's definite that it's going to be Luke Harper. Uh, I mean, in my opinion, uh, slightly predictable, I feel. I feel like if they really want to pull something out of the hat, then don't go that way. But, you know, again, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I am a big Luke Harper fan. I'm a Bray White fan. But I just, I, you know, I just don't like the uh, <laughs> the way it's all going so far. I honestly have, I'm, I'm already concerned about WrestleMania. And, uh, you know, we've got some time to go. But I, I really feel like they need to get this right, stick with it. And uh, I hope someone sat down and wrote out every single week now of SmackDown leading into WrestleMania. So you get this thing so ramped up, like the stakes, whatever it needs to, to, to go with. I hope they've sat down and they're not just going, well, that's the match and we'll just get it on the weeks. Uh, you know, as soon as we come in, we'll sort it out then. And, you know, we'll just do the, the old sort of normal kind of road into it. I hope that they really do have a, a few things up their sleeve. Uh, Matt, going on to Raw now, and another sort of um, thing, very similar to the Whites, and actually I felt like in a lot of ways, maybe maybe another reason why that match didn't happen between Randy and Bray the way we thought it would is because of the Owens and Jericho split, and it, it's very similar um, you know, the sort of build to it, the times they got together as a united kind of stable, uh, the very similar kind of things. And I felt like, it, it, you know, just on different shows, I know that the concept of the gimmicks are completely different, but, you know, how much of that can you have going on and how much are people going to care when you've got two of them going on at the same time? I, I really don't know. Um, Matt, what did you think about the split? Do you think it was right to split them up, or would you have kept them together, you know, a good thing going? Do you think people care enough for Jericho to have a, a run-in as a babyface at this point? And, um, and also, what, what did you make of the timing of doing this now, before we're even at Raw's pay-per-view, um, considering Owens has got to face Goldberg? Yeah, it's another one that's quite confusing. Some of this just feels all quite rushed this year. Mm. Um, like this breakup. It's, even Chris Jericho has said that it's some of the best work that he's been doing and, and the stuff that he's enjoyed the most. So I'm, I'm just kind of baffled like why they would break him up. It was a good thing, and people were really buying into it. And all the catchphrases had come together and everything. And I, d- I just don't know why, when they see that someone has to leave for a little while... WWE feels like they must get a payoff match. They must, like, break this up like it's going to generate some interest. When my interest would have laid a lot more firmly is if Jer- they just said, like, told the truth. They said Jericho's got something else he's got to do. He's got other projects. He's got to do stuff with his band. But they just let them part ways. And they said, well, you know, like, I'll be back, you know, but mm-hmm. I don't know when then I'll be anticipating Jericho's return so much more. Yeah. But he's just going to get like fed to Kevin Owens now somehow because Kevin has to get this win. He's looked like such a weak champion. He has to beat Jericho now. So it really is kind of disappointing. I mean, especially, like you said, going into the next pay-per-view where he has to fight Goldberg and we haven't been given a clear reason why they have split and you kind of feel like he needs Jericho because he's been such a weak champion, as we said. Yeah, I'm with you there. And why on earth WWE couldn't just say to themselves, well, you know, let's just have Jericho Owens at somewhere else down the line, like whether it be at SummerSlam uh, in New York, or if you want to go later, you book it like Survivor Series, which I know is going to be in a big crowd as well um, this year in Texas. So, I mean, there was a lot of opportunities that, you know, don't have to rush this match out. I felt like they've just kind of done this too fast. I didn't like the turn. I felt it was a little... It it didn't have that feeling that it that it needed. Uh, I don't think anybody was like. I mean, it got reaction on the night, but I don't think people were like, "Yo, it's finally happened" type of thing. I think this could have been rolled out a lot longer. I would have liked to have seen them to go on a lot longer. But you know, I know people will huff and haw and say, "Well." think of the WrestleMania match that these two could have and no doubt these two could have a, a great match. I just I just think it's it's just gonna be so designed just for to get a win for Kevin Owens here. And Matt, it almost speaks to me now that, that it is inevitable 
that Kevin Owens will be losing the title against Goldberg now. I mean, it's 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 absolutely uh, almost a guarantee now with this happening already. I it, this sort of thing should have probably happened the night after, yeah, if that's the way they're going to go. But I think the night, you know, now they've already done it. It's it's almost a, really a foregone conclusion. Um, is there any way in your mind, Matt, that that Kevin Owens walks out the champion and we see a championship match between? Jericho and Owens, or do you think it's it's full on for Goldberg now? Well, you know, I've got to put some hope <laughs> that Kevin Owens would retain, even though it's a really, really slim shot. But mm. we saw the whole thing. They, they never really explained why uh, Owens and Jericho have broken up, but we'll probably get to that tonight, I suppose. But um, I just got to hope that this conversation that he had with Triple H meant something. Maybe now he's got a new ally or something, and maybe they can pull some sort of shenanigans on that night mm. but you know even if it was like at the expense of a good ending of that pay-per-view I just really hope Owens retains sure uh, yeah no I'm, I'm with you there a hundred percent and you know like I say it's not you know, it just wasn't done. I felt like it was a little bit rushed. Um, Matt, let's let's go on to another topic now. Uh, again, WWE Raw. This, this really caught me off guard, as they all have done in in a lot of ways. But we we see the crowning of a new women's champion again, Matt. Um, how surprised were you that this happened um, already? And the fact that Bailey's won it, but she's won it on Raw um, now. Okay, this is becoming a bit of a a a, a coming, uh, you know, a, a sort of theme now that Charlotte can't do it on Raw, but she can do it on the pay per views. It's, I didn't mind when they kept doing that between her and Sasha because I felt that was a thing between her and Sasha Banks. But now Bailey and and Bailey winning her first title on a Raw, it, it seems again much too rush. I don't know why they've done that um, for the life of me. Matt, what, what, I mean, is there any? What, what did you think of it first and foremost? Because we are both Bailey fans, no doubt about it. But this seems this seems way out of the blue. This seems like there's been no real reasoning as to why she she wins this on Raw, and you know we we've had the Rumble, um, and and it just seems like that moment, that that special moment, we were kind of all picturing in our minds. You know, let's have that great rematch between Sasha Banks and Bailey at WrestleMania one day down the line where Bailey will win our first belt and all the rest of it. Um, that won't happen uh, because now we've already got it. it. It kind of reminds me, Matt, of the old WCW booking sense where they used to give a lot of stuff away on free TV. I feel like WWE are doing that here um, by having Bailey win this. What was your reaction to that, Matt, um, ba- Bailey winning her, her first title? Well, like you said, like, Nothing against Bailey because we're big Bailey fans, but it just felt like the wrong place and the wrong time. It didn't. I mean, I know it's a big moment to win your first title, but it felt given to her. It didn't feel like it was earned, and especially the way that they had to get Sasha come out and she put a little bit of interference into the match and everything. And right now, like Charlotte, she was the most dominant champion in mm. WWE, I would say, because she was a heel character going out, winning matches under her own steam, didn't really need any help sure. for the most part. And then it just feels like they've taken that for just a small like payoff when they could have got a huge payoff having Bailey win at some sort of big pay per view. Mm-hmm. Um it didn't necessarily need to be one that everyone was like expecting it to be. They could have gone on and had a fight at WrestleMania. She didn't necessarily have to win there, could have lost then. Mm-hmm. And then if they really wanted to portray her as an underdog, you know, just make it unexpected. But like when they put the main event on and it was the women's match, they were saying, Oh, this is gonna be your main event and then it was like it was like we got in a weird time loop. We were back in time, and then it was the Sa- uh, Sasha and Charlotte match, but it was just one person had changed, and it was Bailey, and then she got the win. It was all like we'd seen this. I mean, nothing against both of their wins to, to Sasha and Bailey, but I feel like it would mean more if they won them under some completely different circumstances like that. Sure. Yeah, I'm totally with you. Uh, yeah, I just feel like a real wasted opportunity with Bailey. Um, and you know, listen. It doesn't. I don't think it, it does any damage to Charlotte because Charlotte is. She's kind of made an, such a name for herself now. She's the pay per view queen and all the rest of it. That 
it's okay for her, but I just felt like for, for Bailey, this just didn't sit well. I didn't mind it, like I said before, with, with her and Sasha, but I just feel with Bailey, like, should be a completely different thing. But I feel like her doing this just makes her almost the same. And it's like Charlotte, you know, whatever Charlotte does now, don't ever defend your title on Raw anymore. Um, just defend them on pay per views. I mean, it's, it's getting silly. But. Um, you know, it, it, we've got what we've got. I mean, obviously there are plans there, Matt. I'm hoping that the, somebody's fought this out where we're going to get some sort of payoff to it. But is it all going to be about Matt going into the next pay-per-view and, and sort of all about Charlotte keeping that streak up? And, and if so, you know, it doesn't say a lot for Bailey again, does it really? <laughs> I mean, it'd be a disaster, couldn't it? It does make me... It makes me worry as well. Like, we just saw... Naomi win her first ever title, mm-hmm. not too far apart between these. Yeah. And it's like, is there like a real problem within WWE right now? Are they really trying that hard to please the fans? Mm-hmm. Are they going to put all of their titles on, on sort of face characters who are popular with the fans just in order to generate some like, some more acceptance from the fans? I don't mm-hmm. know. It just feels like they're trying too hard in some way. Sure. And, you know, it feels like they don't have the chase anymore for the title. It just feels like once they get bored of one situation and they want to, like, give the fans what they want, they just give them the title and they just say, well, here you go, here's your champ. Are you happy now? <laughs> yep, no, I'm, I'm totally with you there. I think you're absolutely right. Um, well, we're going to have to see how that goes. Um, here's an interesting thing before we move on, folks. Um, already, Matt, uh, odds are already coming in. Uh, the bookies have already made some WrestleMania suggestions on this. And uh, a few interesting readings. Randy Orton is already odds on favourite, Matt, of walking out of WrestleMania the champion, regardless of who's in the match. Um, Brock Lesnar is also being named favourite. Um, one to ten. Um, on that one of walking out the Universal Champion and that's before Goldberg's even won it which might tell you all Um, and then uh, how about this bat I mean this is probably if this is the route Kevin Owens goes Kevin Owens being the new US Champion at the end of the show you know again bit of a step down there and uh, in the Continental Champion odds this is an interesting one Baron Corbin uh, Wrestlemania they're predicting a victory for him there and uh, and just what we were talking about the raw women's uh, title. How about this then, Matt? As a, a prediction, Bailey has been tipped to be favourite of walking out that night. Apparently, uh, so that'd be very interesting. So yeah, a lot of, lot of weird things going on there um, with the odds. But of course, you're going to get that at this point. But um, yeah, uh, very interesting. The odds always do generally give you a hint and a clue of where things are going and the fact that they already think <laughs> that Brock's that Brock's walking out the Universal Champion mate. I mean it's not exactly you know, whoever is protecting this stuff backstage really needs to have a better security around them, you know, they need to sort of sign confidentiality forms. I don't care what it is, but somebody somewhere needs to be doing something um for all this stuff to be getting at. But um and in any case, let's let's hope maybe we're going to be surprised. Um, some some breaking news now, Matt, as we always get on our live shows. And uh, already, uh, familiar WWE Hall of Fame, a new inductee uh, to this year added just recently, will be Diamond Dallas Page, Matt. Diamond Dallas Page will be inducted into the 2017 Hall of Fame. Um, we, we spoke about Diamond Dallas Page a lot on, on our show, especially when we spoke about his DVD, uh, or, or not his DVD, but his... His uh, documentary that he had on, um, of course, Jake the Snake Roberts, which um, I still think is available on Netflix. For anybody that hasn't seen uh, The Resurrection of Jake the Snake Roberts, it's a, it's a really good, um, very much heart, sort of emotional roller coaster with uh, DDP. And even if you're not a wrestling fan, you will definitely get something from it, no doubt about it. Um, I, I guess on, on, you know, not just his work after wrestling, Matt, I guess he, he is one of those people, Matt, that, that probably deserves to be in there, do you think? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm a big fan of his work in and out of the ring. Sure. And, you know, just that he came into the business quite late on in, uh, uh, at, a, at an older age and mm-hmm. actually still achieved like, at the highest level. That just says something about like the kind of guy that he is. You know, He goes at this 110%. And, you know, and yeah, definitely, he, he even had a good run in WWE for the short time mm-hmm. that he was there. And I think that that was a little bit of a shame because he could have done more 
when he was within WWE, but it was a shame that it was a bit of a short stint. Sure. Uh, yeah.